Hi, welcome to the lab. We're going to take a technical look at what makes the A4915 such a great motor driver to design in. This device is a cost-effective three-phase brushless motor driver that simplifies consumer and industrial designs by eliminating the need for a microprocessor. Its gate drive is rated to 50 volts and can support up to 150 amp load current. The voltage rating of the device and drive capability of the device supports a wide range of motor loads. Supporting a 5 volt minimum voltage and integrated sleep function, this part is ideal for battery operated high power applications. We have our A4915 development kit completely set up with a motor. We have a brushless DC motor attached with the signal wires for the hall sensors, the output wires for the motor windings, and we have our DC bus supply. So here's what we'll be working with. A frequency generator, which will be used to apply PWM signals to the board. A voltage source to provide the bus supply to the device. A second voltage source is used to supply the analog voltage to the speed input. And, as you see, we have a motor with an attached disc for visual cue for rotation. The scope probes are set up on the three outputs of the motor and an additional probe to see the input signals. The display of the oscilloscope is output to a PC monitor to better display the traces. So first, let's take a look at how the A4915 controls motor commutation. What we're showing here are the three output signals. Channel 1 is the yellow trace, the red trace is channel 2, the blue trace is channel 3. These are outputs SA, SB, and SC respectively. Channel 4, the green trace, is the input PWM signal. Channel F1, the orange trace, is a zoomed in portion of the input PWM signal. So right now, we have zero duty cycle applied to the enable PWM input. We're going to use the dial to increase the duty cycle of the PWM on the enable input. As you can see, the output shown on the orange trace shows a low duty cycle square wave, and the motor begins spinning. As I increase the duty cycle, the motor speed increases. We reach 100% duty cycle, and then reduce the duty cycle to slow the motor down. As I do this, you can see the electrical frequency of the outputs decrease. On the scope, we're showing the same outputs on channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3, representing SA, SB, and SC, respectively. The green channel is the PWM signal, which is applied to the direction pin of the A4915. The duty cycle is currently chopping at 50%. The direction of the motor is controlled by increasing or decreasing the duty cycle around 50%. As you can see, a duty cycle above 50% spins the motor in one direction. And then, returning to 50%, the speed returns to zero. When the duty cycle is reduced below 50%, the direction has switched. Now that we have demonstrated how to control the motor with three inputs, let's explore some of the other functions and see how the A4915 device performs. We are applying a DC voltage to the speed input. And now we're going to apply our enable jumper. By increasing the DC voltage on the speed input, the motor spins forward. You'll see the DC voltage here on the scope. And you can see the output switching waveform. Now we have 100% duty cycle applied and back down to zero. The integrated brake feature on the A4915 is active low. Therefore, you must apply a positive voltage to the brake pin to operate normally. I will demonstrate the brake function by pulling the brake pin low. The oscilloscope in normal mode triggered on the brake input. When the brake command is implemented, you can see the large current being recirculated in the low side drivers and in the motor winding. As soon as I trigger brake, the motor stops very quickly. Three, two, one. Getting a board for the A4915 is easy. 
Just go to AllegroMicro.com, type 4915 in the search box, then go to the A4915 product page and select your board based on package type. And remember that Allegro application support is always available. Until next time. Thank you.